So I've been reading through the Bible. Uh, you know that if you've been watching these videos and uh, I'm, on, I'm on schedule to read through the Bible uh, this year. Uh, and so I've come to the book of Ezra. Uh, it's a really interesting book and it's a book that maybe you're not very familiar with. So let me tell you the story. Um, the nation of Israel and most specifically the, the tribe of Judah uh, they have been hauled away, and they're they're captives in a foreign land. Uh, now, now, Judah is the the region where we have Jerusalem and we have the temple. It was the the centerpiece of the worship of of, of God. It's where all the action took place. And it was the big city, and it was the holy city where where they would worship, where the nation of Israel would worship God. And so the city was lined and had been had been ruined. Uh, and it, it lay in ruins for about 70 years, uh, for decades. And then something happened. Uh, the, all of, the, all of the, the Judah was, uh, all the nation of Israel was in captive <clears throat> uh, to, uh, to Persia, first Babylon and then Persia, and they were in a foreign land. And then one day the king of Persia, King Osiris, the Lord moved in his heart. The God of the nation of Israel moved in his heart. And he, was, he was a person of faith. And, and he said uh, that, that, that the nation of Israel should go back and should rebuild the, the temple in Jerusalem. And he would worship there. So it was a great day for the nation. And so they, uh, many of them, priests and Levites and gatekeepers and artisans and, and, and some just super regular people, uh, Tens of thousands of captives were freed to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. And so they did that, and it was uh, ultimately successful, uh, but it was not without its challenges. Um, they, they, they made the trek back to Jerusalem, but what they found when they got there was it was a land that was now filled with foreigners. People had moved in as they had been uh, hauled away into captivity. Foreigners had moved into the city and the surrounding areas. And now they were, the, 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 the Israelites, and specifically Judah, they, they were met with opposition at every turn. Uh, as they re-entered, uh, they, they came back to some sense of normalcy in life. Uh, decades later, um, at every turn, there was opposition. And the people in the cities and in the surrounding areas, they would, they would, they would mock them. Uh, they would tattletale, tell Persia that they were gonna, that, that, that these Israelites were gonna rebel against them. Uh, they would, they would spread rumors. They would lie. They just opposed them at every, at every uh, step. And so I read um, from Ezra. Chapter four, verse four. It says this: Then the local residents tried to discourage and frighten the people of Judah to keep them from their work. They bribed agents to work against them and to frustrate their aims. This went on during the entire reign of King Cyrus of Persia and lasted until King Darius of Persia took the throne. After that, there was King Xerxes, there was King Artaxerxes. All these were kings of Persia. And during the reign of these four kings, at every turn, uh, Judah, uh, these Israelites, they were trying to build the temple uh, and they were meeting, uh, just running into opposition at every turn. Um, and, but, but finally, uh, finally, uh, after decades of hard work and opposition and turmoil, uh, they finally completed the temple. Um, it was from uh, 538 BC when they started to 521 BC when they actually, or 515 rather, when they finally finished uh, the temple. There was still a lot of work to be done in the city and on the walls, but they finished. And so I read from Ezra 6 <clears throat> verse uh, 22, it says, they ate the Passover meal. They celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. <clears throat> there was great joy throughout the land because the Lord had changed the attitude of the king of Persia toward them so that he helped them to rebuild the temple of God, the God of Israel. 
So from 538 BC to 515, that's, uh, what is that, 23 years, right? Decades of opposition. I find this story interesting uh, for many reasons, but one being because many of us are about to re-enter, uh, come back to some sense of normalcy and living. Now, we're not going to be building a temple. We're not going to be building walls uh, or build, rebuilding a city. Um, but maybe uh, as you have been living in isolation and really haven't been fighting opposition out there in the world, now you're going to come back into your normal life and you've got you've got some goal, some some plan. The Lord has put it on your heart to do something. Um, maybe you uh, have some money that you need to invest in a new project, or maybe you need to sell something and kind of simplify life, or, but you've got goals, you've got plans. You're trying to make a re-entry into life now, like, like the Judah was, like the, the Israelites were, and you're going to meet some opposition. You're going to run right into the face of someone who doesn't want you to succeed, opposes you, um, mocks you, uh, spreads rumors about you, uh, fights against you in your efforts to, uh, to accomplish whatever it is the Lord has put on, put on your heart to accomplish. Here's the, the, the truth of the good news. If you're a Christian, if you're a Christ follower, then you are a child of God, and he works on your behalf. He shows you his favor the way he did the nation of Israel. So just four thoughts, four, four words, really, as you re-entry, as you, as you uh, attempt to re-enter uh, life, the workforce, getting back to normal. Uh, you're going to run into some people that fight you, oppose you. Here's a word from, from the, 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 example of, uh, the example of Judah, these, these people, these Israelites. Number one, um, they prayed. As you begin your new path, your new uh, your new plan, your new goals, pray. They prayed night and day, often for decades, that the Lord might restore their nation, that the Lord might restore the temple. And, and, and after, after many, many years of praying, he, he did that. Pray. Whatever your plan is, whatever you're considering, pray. The second step was after they prayed, they planned. They made a plan. They, they measured out the the old foundation of the ruins of the temple and they determined where the new uh, temple would, would lie and what the, what the uh, foundation would be and where the corners would be. And so I encourage you to pray earnestly as you, as you seek this, this, this new, whatever, whatever it is God's calling you to and then, and then, and then plan, make, make serious plans, make detailed plans regarding whatever, whatever it is you wanna accomplish. And then the third thing they did was they petitioned. Not only did they ask the Lord for help, but they asked others for help. You petition. Maybe there's someone in your neighborhood, in your community, at your workplace. Whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, you ask that some other flesh and blood human being would help you. And because you're a child of God, the Lord will, will show you favor. He will cause someone to help you who may not help you otherwise. You, you petition people. Not only do we pray, we petition the Lord, not only do we plan, but we petition others, human beings, that they might help you succeed in what it is you're trying to accomplish in these new days. And then the fourth step was they pressed on. You might use the word, um, they persevered. They pressed on. They, they worked for decades, like I said, 23 years to get this done. Man, I, I sometimes have a hard time persevering for a day. Um, but, but the word from the Lord today is that we as Christ followers, we, we, we press on. So whatever it is you're trying to accomplish in these new days, maybe God has put something on your heart, maybe a project, maybe a business, maybe a new direction in life. As we re-enter uh, some sense of normalcy in life, I hope God has put something new on your heart, something that you want to accomplish. And so I would encourage you to follow this pattern. Pray, pray earnestly. God, what is it, what is it you have for me? And, and then I encourage you to take this the second step of, of planning. Put it down on paper. Lay it down in detail. Maybe show it to a few close friends and see what they think. Pray, plan, and then petition. Ask for the help of, of friends and, and maybe people that aren't even necessarily uh, Christians, but they, they, they would help you because the God would show you favor in their eyes. 
You, you, you pray, you plan, you petition, and then you press on. You persevere. You work hard for the long haul, saying, I won't give up. I won't quit too soon. I am going to finish what I've started. If the Lord has put this dream, uh, this goal, this idea, this project in your heart, then you're a child of God, and he will see you through to the end. He will, he will accomplish what he has begun, what he has just put in your heart. He will see that through to the end. So, so, so really, really fall back on the goodness, the truth that you're a child of God and he is working on your behalf. And, and if he has called you to something, you can do it. You can accomplish it. Love you guys.